Hello, sports fans. Now, I know we've probably all lost a bit of interest this week because we're all just looking forward to Cheltenham. But we're going to try and help you with some more pennies for your Cheltenham purse. Uh, and this weekend's racing is from Sandown. We've got to some wonderful all-weather action, of course, as well from uh, Wolverhampton. As always, it's myself. We've got Daryl Carter and we've got Andrew Mount. So uh, lots for you to look forward to. Uh, we start at Sandown. We've got that 150. It's a grade three over two and a half miles. A really large chunk, actually, of this field uh, looking to continue there winning sequences. I've got a fancy in this. It isn't any of those. And uh, I like the look of Captain Morgs for this, who so far, uh, I think, actually hasn't had a race run to suit. Uh, been in small fields at short prices, but he beat annual uh, Invictus on his hurdling debut. That's worked out really well since. Um, I think and I think he wants a truly run two and a half miles in a bigger field. And uh, that's exactly what he's going to get. So uh, that's going to be my selection. Uh, what do you like for this, Daryl? Oh, I love this race. This is uh, this is really, really competitive. Um, I, I've got uh, three made my shortlist, but uh, I've got two I want to talk about there. The first one is Carl Philippe, who won at Exeter, beating Sheldon. By 10 lengths last time out, um, this horse ran a really good time figure that day. He was always well-positioned, mind, um, but he did win eased down. The time before that against Martin Howe, he was beaten by half a length, who re in here. He was held up at the rear of the field off a slow gallop, and uh, he clattered every single hurdle in the home straight. So he was better than the bare result there. That was definitely a step forward last time at Exeter, though. Um, so I do want to have a little bit on him. And I do want to have a little bit on the horse that he beat, Sheldon. Uh, he's 20 to 1. Now, he's back in a handicap here. Like I say, he was beaten by 10 lengths last time out at Exeter. But he was one of the only horses in the whole, on the whole, in the whole card that ran around the inside rail on the worst of the ground. Um, and he yeah. did remarkably well to finish second. Um, he was in midfield, so he wasn't uh, towards the front of the, of the pack for most of the race. Uh, and he's the only one that left the pack to be able to go and chase down Carl Philippe. Now, he's £11 better off with that horse today in this race because it's now in a handicap. He's been left on the same mark of 122. Carl Philippe's up to a mark of 130. The time before for Sheldon at Fakenham, nothing went right, really. The track was awful for him. Um, it was too sharp, but he got through the sticky, heavy ground. He looked like he hated it, but he got through and got the job done. Time before that, he was behind witness protection at Chepstow. It was run in a really good time figure. He didn't handle the Townhill run there. I don't think he's had much go his way. I think this better ground at Sandown, now in a handicap off a lenient mark of 122, I think 20 to 1 is a very, very big price. The one I couldn't have is uh, is Martin Howe. Um, I couldn't have him because uh, last time at Exeter, I was waiting he was... for you to say Captain Morgs then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Martin, it, it, uh, Martin Howe, he actually was on the on the same card as um, as Carl Philippe. And at the third last, he was 28 lengths behind him, uh, despite the ground deteriorating throughout the day. Uh, and they uh, Carl Philippe raced later on the card. So I, I like that race um, going forward. So I think I'm going to take the pair of them. One, just to give a good mention to, is this strike in the pose. Now, I know he was behind Captain Morgs previously, but I think he's a better horse now. Um, he's looked to appreciate the step up to two and a half miles, and he did it really well at Wing Canton before winning the Exeter in a canter. Time figures are nothing to shout about, but he does look like a nice horse. So uh, Sheldon, 20 to 1 is massive for him especially with that weight reversal and Carl Philippe. I'm going to start with two in the race. Okay, so main selection, Carl Philippe and a saver on it at the big price. Um, nah, main, Sheldon... select, main selection, Sheldon. Oh, very good. <laughs> 20 to 1 then and, and positive mention for Carl Philippe. Uh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, interesting race, the EBF final. Um, I had a, a runner in this race in 2010 called Diamond Brook. 20 to 1 into 9 to 1. And we got completely stitched up because uh, Daryl Jacob, rode the other Nick Williams horse, Alfie Spinner, <laughs> and he recommended we put Peter Toole on this one, who was a mate of his. Now, Peter Toole turned up in the paddock at Sandown looking like he'd got a wooden leg because he'd taken a fall a few days earlier and he could hardly walk. And it um, took about three people to get him on the horse and uh, didn't, get a lot of, <laughs> didn't get a lot of assistance in the saddle and uh, kept on into a never nearer eighth after I was on each way four places at 20 to one or so he went off yeah. miles. But that's another story. Anyway, I'm with you here on Captain Morgs. Um, now, I tipped this one for the Ballymore in the weekender, um, thinking he probably wouldn't run because they'd want to take advantage of his handicap mark here. Um, I'm not sure if he's still in the Ballymore entries, but it'd be interesting to see what happens if he does well here. But he, he really caught the eye last time out at Fakenham because there was a really strong track bias that day. 
Uh, the inside of the track was very soft and badly cut up. Anything that raced around the inner didn't have a prayer. Nico de Boinville took Captain Morgs around the inside and um, uh, Shan Tang, the Emma Laville Veltrain's second favourite, was always wide in that race and uh, uh, won by over four lengths. But I was really impressed with the way Captain Morgs kept battling in that deeper ground on the inside. He's never finished out the first two in his career. And like you say, he looks the type to improve for a big field, strong pace scenario now that he's going handicapping. And, uh, you know, this, um, you know, race will, um, you know, hopefully be run to suit. So, you know, I'm with you on Captain Morgs. Oh, it's nice for us to start the day off agreeing, I'm sure. Uh, so Captain Morgs for me and Andrew and then big prize for Daryl Sheldon is about 20 to 1 at the moment. Um, 225 at Sandown is that Imperial Cup. Uh, we've got the unexposed natural history uh, as the favourite. We've actually not had a winning favourite of this for, for a good while. The last one was back in 2010. Uh, David Pipe does well in this race. He's got a fair few in here. Got Liam Cavallo and uh, Eamon and Nock, Andrew. Yeah, interesting race this. Um, the th thing, uh, it, it, you talk about the favourites having a poor record. So we've had winners at 33 to 1, a host of 20 to 1 shots. It's been a real, real difficult race to win from the front or, or f under a prominent ride. Uh, 15 of the last 20 winners were described as held up. The last 10 winners all came from off the pace. In the last 10 years, 81 horses who raced prominently or made the running on their latest start uh, have run in this and they've all got beaten. So there's loads near the head of the betting, like One True King, Eamon Nanak, uh, Highway 102, uh, who tend to race up with the pace. I've been through the running styles of, of all the participants. Those who habitually come from the back are Langer Dan, Malaya, last year's winner, Hassanabad for uh, the Red Hot Ian Williams yard, uh, Miss Heritage, Hang In There, who's a bit of a dodgy jumper, and Mac the Man. So I, I've just gone with the biggest price of those ones, Mac the Man for Evan Williams. And so uh, okay. he's, uh, I think he was 25s into 22s with William Hill shortly after the betting opened. He's a general yeah. 20 to one shot. Um, so, I, yeah, just look for a horse who's likely to be ridden patiently. Uh, most of those at the front end of the market tend to race up with the pace. That could be a gain them so Mac the man each way for me yeah I think I've got 22s as well for Mac the man so big each way price in there uh, for Andrew Darrell yeah lots of negatives for uh, well not lots of negatives but for those at the top of the market I feel natural history up 16 pounds for that Plumpton win um, completely different track as well and he dominated from the front there just skipping away around the sharp bend so I, I couldn't have him uh, Langer Dan I, I mean they're back in this Langer Dan that I I think this needs two and a half miles. I can't see this being quick enough at all for a race like this. And how the hell that Miss Heritage is the 20 to one outsider or whatever it is with Betfair and Langerdan's 92 second fab, I have no idea. So probably just worth a couple of quid on Miss Heritage just on that basis alone. Uh, there was a couple that made the shortlist. Leon Cavallo was one of them. Um, he's ran some decent time figures. Um, he's not been seen over hurdles since, uh, since 2019. November 2019 at Ascot, he was behind Not So Sleepy. Uh, he was trying to give Not So Sleepy £21 that day. He was only beaten three and three quarter lengths. Not So Sleepy is obviously rated £27 higher now. Runs in the champion hurdle next week. Uh, prior to that, he was running against Elvis Mayo, beating three lengths. Trying to give him £10. He's now £14 higher. So a mark of 142 for Leon Cavallio. You know, he's been running well on the flat. Last seen in sixth in the Cesaro, which, you know... He, he could he could pop up here. Um, the one off the one I fell on was uh, Diego de Charmel. Um, now he was beaten sixty six lengths last time at Kempton by Silver Streak, but that came in the Christmas hurdle. He loomed up on the outside, looking threatening, uh, and then he just couldn't go couldn't go with uh, Epiton and Silver Streak. He's just not at that level these days. But Harry Cobden gave him a really easy time of things, just a couple of nudges down the neck, and that was it. And just came home in his own time. Um, prior to that, Wing Canton, he was a good third in the elite hurdle behind So Royal. Um, he jumped the last on terms, just didn't have the turn of foot that Sir Royale had. Was beaten 12 lengths in the end, eased off. Uh, he started the season at Kempton, was only beaten seven lengths by Silver Street there in a listed race. Um, that was a really, really good run. And that was his first run of the season. Four of his last five wins have come on the back of breaks. Now, he's been given a 77-day break since he was uh, running that grade one on Boxing Day. And this is his first run in a handicap since 2017 when he ran in the county hurdle of mark 149 start the season off at 151 he's down to a mark of 145 this could have just been the plan uh for this horse same connections who won the race last year with malaya the stable mate harry cobden chooses diego de charmel the cheek piece has come off from the kempton run uh, and i think he's got a good chance 16 to 20 16 to 1 he's gonna get four places on the day i think that's a big big price 
Yeah, I've got twenties on mine. So uh, you and Andrew looking at big prices in there. Really interesting. That two twenty five. And if you do like Leon Cavallo, uh, David Pipes had seventeen runners. Uh, in this, which have had three winners, two seconds, a third and a fourth. So uh, definitely do well in that race. That's the Imperial Cup at 2.25. We've got the Mayor's Listed Bumper next. That's at three o'clock. And Rooney Day Woman looks really um, on the up since leaving Pam Sly, obviously with the Nichols team. Hasn't done uh, anything wrong so far, Daryl? Uh, no, but if you could put two words together and the Mayor's and Bumper... Uh, that would be my worst nightmare, which this race is. So I haven't really got a strong opinion in this. Did like the look of Rainy Day uh, woman. I thought she was um, quite a bit of a powerhouse uh, yeah. for the Nichols team. So I'd expect her to be tough to beat. But to be honest with you, my expertise are not in these mayor, Mayor's Bumper races. So uh, uh, hopefully Andrew's got something to, to say on this race. Have you? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah in- interesting race. Um, as you say, Rainy Day woman uh, beat Flirtatious Girl quite comfortably in a listed Mayor's Bumper at Huntingdon last time. I thought Kim Bailey's charge might be a bit a, a bit closer this time. He has won this race before, uh, whereas it's not really been one that uh, Paul Nichols has um, um, particularly uh, aimed at previously. Uh, the interesting one, obviously, is Miss Lamb, given that she ran up against um, Eileen Dover at uh, Market Raisin last time. Now, of course, in that race, um, Eileen Dover uh, has been well... T- I mean, I don't think she's going to go to Cheltenham. She's probably going to go to Aintree. She'll be yeah. um, uh, probably a good bet in that Grade 2 uh, Mayor's Only Bumper at Aintree in April. Third in that race was the Willie Mullins uh, trained Grand, uh, Grand G, who's come out and won since. And, of course, fourth was Dragon Bones, who uh, Daryl was very sweet on at Doncaster last week and uh, won at 40-1. to 1. Now, the slight concern is that those, th- um, those three all raced towards the inside of the track, probably where the ground was slower, whereas Miss Lamb um, in finishing second at 22 to 1 was wide throughout. So there's a suspicion she might have been flattered, but she has won. She, she was unbeaten going into that race, doing well to win from the front in an all-weather bumper at Newcastle. We know how, how hard it is to win from the front at that track. She then followed that up at Weatherby, and um, she's around about 9 to 2, like five of the last seven winners. So uh, there's a system for you. Just back whatever's 9 to 2 in this race, and you seem to uh, <laughs> hit, the, hit the winner more often than not. But it's an interesting race. But yeah, Miss Lamb, uh, maybe she can frank the form of that Eileen Dover market raisin bumper. Okay. Uh, Miss Lamb and no strong view for Daryl, which, of course, we don't have to have in every race, do we? Uh, the last race at Sandown for us is another good race. Listed Chase at 3.35. We've got high up in the air in this for Gary Moore. This horse looking for a sixth time, which we actually saw uh, Carabino doing on Wednesday, didn't we, at Lingfield? There's one I like in this as well. I thought uh, Admiral Baratree would be one for this. Has really improved, I thought, for a fence. Was having to carry £21 more uh, than fire away of Laura Morgan's. Well, that horse has come out and won again since off a much higher mark. So I thought that looked like a really good effort. Bryony Frost seems to, to really get on with this horse. Only went up £4 for that really good second. And I think there's a lot more to give over fences. And I'm going to go with Andrew because he did a big sigh as if he agreed <laughs> with me. And I've just stolen all his words. <laughs> Yeah, I think you've got. I think you've got my house bugged, or at least my laptop. And you've been reading <laughs> I'm my not notes because I, yeah, <laughs> I can show yeah, I'm you my with, workings. I'm with you on Ad, Admiral Baratri and um, say uh, won well at faking them a couple of runs ago, and then um, turning up at the same track last time out, bumped into um, Laura Morgan's fire away. Of course, one of the horses who was part of that um, famous uh, treble where they landed uh, two legs. Obviously, a very well handicapped individual. And far away, and Admiral Baratri got into a ding-dong battle from a long way out in that Fakenham contest. Um, only three quarters of a length between them at the line. And uh, 23 lengths back to the third. And as you say, the, the winners come out and bolted up at Catterick, yeah. winning by about 10 lengths. Uh, Admiral Baratri is six into nine to two with Hills since they opened betting on this race. And uh, I thought he was the way to go. Lucy Wadham traditionally does well at this time of year. She has a good record at Sandown and the yard's been in good form in the last few weeks. Very good. I like it. We agree. That's uh, nice. Um, Daryl? Uh, I like a bit of a price again. I don't know what's going on on this Saturday. But everything I seem to like is a, is a <laughs> massive good. price. The horse is called Ansan for, for Evan Williams. Um, I think this horse is just progressing at a rate of knots. And I like horses that go from the front to Sandown because it is quite a jumping test. And uh, you can sort of, if you jump well off the front end, you can sort of force those into mistakes in behind. Um one at Ludlow by 42 lengths being Fidelio Vallis last time. Paul Nichols um, absolutely cantered all over him, really. He was, he's an improved model for fences, that's for sure. Um, finished off his hurdle season with two wins in decent handicaps um, at Catterick and Taunton. But 
if you go back to his, uh, he fell on debut over fences when um, up against of all the ginger at Exeter. But his second run, I was sure they were handicapping him because he definitely should have beat the 140 raid at House Island and should have beat him quite comfortably. Connor Ring gave that an awful ride that day. Um, but uh, Adam Wedge got back on board latest at Ludlow and won by 42 lengths. I think he's a real nice, big, strapping improver. He's only a six-year-old. I think he's got plenty more to come. And I think a mark 139 could, could definitely be well be well within his reach. So uh, hopefully he's going to go from the front. He might well get a soft lead on out, out on his own. And uh, yeah, yeah, 14 to 1, I think it's a big price for Anne Sam. He's got some nice novice hurdle for him. Yeah. Um, obviously, Adam Wedge can't ride. Sadly, he's injured. So we won't be seeing... Uh, him, unfortunately, at Cheltenham either. So condolences, because that's annoying for him. I'm sure he's, he's quite a lot of injuries, I think, over a period of time, hasn't he? So that's frustrating for him. Um, before we move on to the all-weather, um, have any of you got anything else that you like at Sandown in any of the other races? Uh, not no, for not for me. No? Perfect. Uh, we go on to Wolverhampton then. Uh, Daryl's favourite track on the all-weather. Um, and uh, we start with that uh, 205 Lady Wolfruna listed stakes and uh, Ryan Morse uh, in operation in this and he rode last year's winner didn't he an urban icon and uh, he's on Mum's Tipple in this Daryl yeah I really like Mum's Tipple for this um, really <laughs> caught the eye at Lingfield last time um, behind Exalted Angel uh, just got absolutely no run over the six fell on trip there that came on the f- on the back of a gelding operation um, this horse had a bit of a blip uh, last season as a, as a three-year-old, but the two-year-old form is rock solid. Um, and I think going up to seven furlongs now is definitely going to suit this horse. Just look like a rejuvenated horse at Lingfield. And uh, uh, I think this is going to take all the beating really up to seven furlongs. Ryan Moore on board, that's a really big positive for me. Um, uh, yeah, and the young progressive horse in the field should take a lot of beating. I'm not sure Lord of the Lodge quite sees out this seven furlongs, um, whereas I think Mum's Tipple is going to be very strong at the finish. Yeah, a bit of value as well. I think they're 15 yeah. to 2 at the moment, so it's, it's an each way bet, isn't it? Um, Andrew? Yeah, I uh, backed uh, and napped Lord of the Lodge at Newcastle last time when he was just chinned at a big price after making the running. Um, but there are other pace angles in the race here, not least uh, a stilio second run for Paul Midgley. Now, the interesting thing about this race is it's often gone to a fresh horse. And uh, since Wolverhampton laid the tapita surface in place of the polytrack, uh, if yeah. you just backed every horse who'd been off the track for more than 90 days, you'd have hit the winner four times from 19 bets, including the last three winners. And there's not many fresh horses here. A lot of these have been sort of beating each other up um, all winter, or at least yeah. had uh, one or two runs. And uh, I thought here that uh, documenting, who was a disappointment in the race last year when he didn't get the strong pace uh, that suits, could go pretty well after a 112-day break. So the key to him is a good gallop. And he looks like he's going to get it. So you've got Lord of the Lodge, you've got Stilio. Highland dress. There's plenty of pace angles in here, mm. and uh, I think everything is going to go perfect here for documenting who likes to come late and wide down the middle of the track, where we've seen most recent Wolverhampton winners. So I'm quite pleased with stall nine here. Okay, uh, that's the listed race at two o five. Then Mum's Chapel for Daryl Ryan Moore looking to win the race again uh, and documenting for Andrew. Uh, the Lincoln Trial is at two forty and. Uh, looking back at this, the last 20 winners, 15 of them have been in single figures. So it looks like you should be looking at the top of the betting. Uh, and we've got rising star Laura Pearson. She's back in operation. She rides uh, Tad Leal in that, Andrew. Yeah, this is a cracking race. Uh, I gave um, Tad Leal a chance, um, doing really well at the moment um, for the Richard Farhi yard. But the one I'm going to go with is on a session. Uh, talking of stats for this race, there's another good stat, which is that uh, this century, uh, whatever surface has been run on, those aged seven or older are just one from 75 in the Lincoln trial. Um, so I think we've got three horses or four horses in that age bracket. Uh, I did look at the five day stage and uh, of the 16 entered, five were seven or older. So that's a pretty damning stat for the veterans here. And uh, the one I like is I say on a session, first time for David Barron. Now, um, this one ran at the Galway Festival um, um, when uh, uh, last seen. And uh, ran behind a horse called Current Option with a horse uh, with a, a horse called Najord or Jord in second place. Now, mm-hmm. Current Option has won two of his next three. One of them a Group Three. One of them a listed race. Uh, and Najord won the um, the big handicap at, uh, on Champions Day at Ascot. So that form's worked out really well. So on a session was third in that race. David Barron's been in good form with the likes of Venturous here this winter. Uh, and I thought coming back from a break, first run for the yard on a, sh- on a session uh, could be well handicapped. 
yeah, as you say, first run for the David Barron team. Uh, on a session, I think at the moment about 10 to 1. So at the time of recording, again, another good uh, each way uh, pick in there. Daryl, anything you like in there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Al Muffrey. Oh, my God, this horse. He's not seven. This horse is so well hand. Huh? He's not seven, is he? No, he's six. No. He's six, <laughs> but, but he's a little rogue. Um, he's far too keen a lot of the time. I napped him on his last start at, uh, at Kempton, stepping back up to, to a mile two for the first time. And uh, Marco Gianni, just he, he was keen early on. Marco Gianni just took him wide around the whole field, sprinted to the front, and then he got caught inside the final furlong and just eased off, stopped yeah. riding. I made my uh, my opinion known on Twitter that I was not happy with the ride. Uh, and Connections, <laughs> Connections actually DM'd me and said, uh, that'll be the horse that's done that, not the jockey. And that they were planning on coming to this race and then hopefully see what the future holds. They know he's been very keen. They're trying to get him to settle down. The one thing that they want from him, for him, is a, a big field, strongly run race. They think a strongly run mile will suit him. I think his best trip's a mile and a quarter. But this is in between. So I'm going to stick by him here. He's he's well handicapped. He's a pound below his last one in Mark. He's been up as high as 95. I definitely think he's talented. He's pretty unexposed. But uh, the harder they go in this race, the better for him. He's drawn in stall one. So I'm hoping that means he's going to get a little bit of cover on the inside rail um, and then can pull wide and make his challenge late. He'll probably be coming. He'll probably be, be going far too early and too keen or he might be coming far too late. But I'm hoping yeah. he's just going to do it at the right time. But the price is, he's a double figure price, 10 to 1. According to your stats, he needs to be single figure. So mm-hmm. someone go and have a couple of hundred quid on him, but make him 9 to 1 overnight. <laughs> and uh, we should be there or thereabouts. On mine, he's 20s. What? On the Racing Post, Beth Dodds, he's 20s. No, that must not have updated, surely. Al Muffrey. Oh, maybe it has. Well, yeah. it's, a, it's a double you're figure we- weekend. You're welcome. You're welcome. Get your money on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Al Muffrey for Daryl at 20 to 1 about. Um, and on a <laughs> session for Andrew, who's also an each way prize. That's in that 240. Uh, our final race to cover at Wolverhampton is that 3.15. Good class two handicap this, actually, I thought. We've got a very delicate streamline goes in here, who we've seen to good effect, actually, in much better races than this. Um, one group three race on just his fourth start. But he does look to have had a bit of, of a troubled career to date, Daryl. I don't know what's been wrong with him, but we didn't see him for a good while, did we? No, we didn't. He, he should be able to reverse that form from Kempton last time with Brian the Snail at the top of the market, though, I thought. I thought it was a decent run. Um, yeah. I wasn't overly convinced by a lot in here. I thought Repartee is the best. I thought Repartee is the best horse in the race. And I thought going forward will be the best horse out of the rest of these uh, in a year or so's time. Whether or not he's going to be ready first time up after 225 days off the track, first time on the all weather, you know, there are some doubts. I'm not sure. But Kevin Ryan's booked Kevin Stott. That's always a good um, a good sign for that for those connections. Cheap pieces go on for the first time. So perhaps they are expecting a decent run. He was third in the gym crack. Um, he, he goes well. I think he's a better horse when he's fresh. Um, and back at six furlongs after racing at a mile when it, we last saw him, um, I think I think uh, he could go well. So I'm going to give Repartee a squeak. I, it wouldn't be a confident bet by any means, but uh, I think he's definitely going to be the best horse going forward out of a lot of these. Okay. Yeah, a rep RT then for uh, Daryl Andrew. I'm shortlist of three here, and I'm going to also side with rep RT. There's a very interesting angle with uh, Kevin Ryan when he puts cheek pieces on one. Um, good profit over the years, but in particular when Kevin Stock gets on them in handicap company. Um, the pair have combined in handicaps with first time cheap pieces 31 times. Nine of those 31 horses have won. It's a strike rate of over 29%. If you bet them all blind at SP, um, plus £58.33 to a £1 level stake. Uh, I tipped a few of these in my column last year and they just kept on winning. So uh, that's a, a cracking little stat. Um, the other one is Summer Summergand. Uh, we, we know him as a sort of you know, big field straight track turf horse. He often runs well in the, uh, races like the Wokingham and the Stewards Cup. But he's had very few opportunities on turning tracks. When he gets one, he normally runs well. He won at Pontefract last summer. Uh, I tipped him up uh, here at Wolverhampton last time. He was just chinned in a close third behind Ventress, um, finishing third. And you've got um, the um, another David Barron newcomer, is it? Uh, Zarini here. Um, a slight worry about his breeding. He's by Sayuni, a site that does particularly well on polytrack. 
not so well onto Peter. So maybe he'll sort of, you know, need this run and perhaps we should be backing, backing him somewhere like Chelmsford or Lingfield next time. But uh, as for the pick, it's repartee over Summergand. Yeah, I thought Summergand, when we got more entries before Dex, I think had there been a few more runners and there was a bit more pace in the race, but there isn't any, I don't think, now, really. No, um, I would imagine, um, yeah, the repartee will probably make the running he has done in the past. So he won, he won on his race course debut, so he's certainly proven when fresh. And hopefully he can just uh, get out and uh, get stay off the inside rail and uh, make all. Keep going. Yeah, let's hope so then. Um, repartee for, for both our uh, guys there in the 315. Um, we'll do anything else at Wolverhampton um, or anywhere else. Uh, Andrew, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, there's a, a couple of interesting ones. The, the 1220, it's only a claimer. But there's a horse called Steel River. He's older than I am. He, he's a bit of a monkey. He, 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 travels, st- <laughs> he, he travels strongly, unlike me. Um, and I, I really thought he'd win here last time in a three-runner claimer. But um, Tom Eves has taken the donut route round the inside. I mean, uh, he, he got he got the a, a good pace despite there only being three runners. They've actually raced in single mm. file for much of the race. Um, and he's finished half a length behind one barber. Um, but rather than switch right and come down the middle, he switched left and got up the dead rail. And uh, um, you know, my, my cat's still sore from how my, often I kicked her. And, <laughs> uh, you don't so, say so, things sorry. like that in this. No, day sorry. Yeah, no, we, 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 don't, we don't condone the, condone the abuse of animals in uh, in this video. That was just a joke, obviously. But yeah, it, it was frustrating to see. I mean, you know, he, he might have got beat anyway. He might have finished second by a neck instead of half a length. But um, yeah, so. Uh, with more runners and, a, and a, what should be a, a decent gallop, hopefully um, Steel River can make amends in the twelve twenty, and then in the um, um, in the later race, so of oh, the twelve fifty five, um, a horse called Punting for Richard Hughes. Um, disappointed when the money was down at Lingfield last time, and uh, w- one of several sort of rather poor, in ill judged Shane Kelly rides recently, and uh, Adam Kirby takes over this time and his sire power has got a fantastic record on to peter 17 winners from 97 runners 17 and a half percent strike rate and if you'd bet them blind over the years a huge profit of 115 quid to a one pound level stake punting's mostly raced on poly track but he's only had one run here at wolverhampton and he won it so back on the to peter to jockey upgrade i think uh, punting could be the way to go here in the 12.55 uh, annoyingly, I've got one in the 12.55 and it's not the same as yours. Um, it's last year's winner. Um, my target, I thought, are Michael uh, Wiggins. He is a little bit higher in the weights now, but I just thought uh, he's a pound higher after a better second last time out. I think he's about 10 to 1, which I just thought, as regards a horse, we know goes well there and uh, perhaps coming back into a bit of form. So uh, in the 12.55, that was kind of my extra one. I thought my target at about 10s. Uh, Daryl? Uh, nothing on your weather, unfortunately. Up at Hereford, uh, three yep. twenty-seven at Hereford. It's a horse called Voyage de Retour for Toby Laws. Second run for Toby Laws. Uh, going over fences. This is a winning point to point. Uh, came out um, at Lingfield in October and ran a really nice eye-catching race behind Fair Giles. So that race has worked out really well. Then went to Southern and finished behind only the Bold um, over two and a half miles. But goes over fences now very quickly uh, and stepped up to two miles five. I think this horse could go well. This field is not very strong at all. Um, and it's just it's just the quickness that they're switching to fences because it was a really decent run at big odds, um, 40 to one behind only the bold last time. And obviously they think this horse is all about jumping fences. A nine-year-old, but a very unexposed nine-year-old. So um, okay. worth keeping an eye on that one there. Uh, in the 4.37, there's a small field. Mayor's handicap hurdle. Strike Hallow has been given an opening mark of 108 for Venetia Williams. I think that is very, very lenient. Um, fourth last time behind Champagne Rhythm over two and a half miles. Drops back to two miles today. Um, fell when behind the, the what was going to run behind the Glancing Queen and only went off at four to one behind the Glancing Queen that day. Um, previous to that was behind Anything for Love, who's done wonders since. Is rated one, around 130. So 108 for Strike Hallow on handicap debut. It should be uh, it should be a straightforward task at Hereford. Should just make all and shouldn't be caught. Real covering uh, all bases there then. So we've got plenty from Sandown, plenty from Wolverhampton, uh, and a little bit from Hereford as well. If you fancy oh, anything there, 
Leona, can I just um, uh, give you a quick one for Hereford very quickly? Horse I mentioned in the um, the Cheltenham preview, which was Maracuja for um, Dan Skelton, uh, runs in the 402 and needs to win to get a penalty to have any chance of getting in the Grand Annual at Cheltenham next week. Uh, we'll hopefully make the running under Bridget Andrews. So look out for Maracuja in the 402. Brilliant. Uh, naps of the whole weekend, please. Do you want to go first, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go uh, for a big price one and uh, Mac the man in the um, Imperial Cup, the 225 at Sandown on Saturday. Perfect. Daryl? Oh, I could give you loads. <laughs> you have, you have um, to pick one. Pick the best one. One. <laughs> the, the one that should certainly win is, is Stroke Hallow at, Her- at Hereford uh, in the 437. But, okay. but. But Diego de Charmel at sixteen to one, and Sheldon at twenty to one—they're far too big prices. So just make sure you pack them as well. Trying, you try to take that, uh, Andrew on with you, your nap. Um, and my nap is going to be Captain Morgs in that one fifty at Sandown. So uh, me and Andrew are both hoping that wins. Uh, that's it, guys. Obviously, thanks for watching. I hope we're keeping you entertained as always. Don't forget to contact us with any questions, suggestions, things you'd like to see, not like to see going forward. Uh, and, of course, you've got gg.co.uk that, as always, has got all those race cards, extra videos uh, and tips as well every single day. That's it. Take care, guys, from me, Andrew and Daryl. Cheltenham! <laughs>